And let's talk about templates. Uh, and I, I see this quite a bit. So first of all, uh, is uh, when you do templates, and I've got a picture of one right here um, uh, that has all different types of controls in it, which are good things uh, where you can use geometry to turn on switches. Uh, and a lot of people use that as a horizontal feature constraint. But just remember that horizontal, if you have that horizontal feature constraint, it is processed at every template drop. In other words, if you, for instance, if I want to turn on a curb and gutter template, I want to turn the curbs off at driveways. Well, if you have a horizontal constraint and have one template drop the whole length of your corridor, every template drop is looking out there to find that uh, geometry with that feature definition on. Um, so it's got to look for that every template drop. Uh, so one of the things you can do is uh, instead of having the switch, you can actually use template drops instead uh, of the horizontal feature constraint uh, to do, uh, accomplish that. Uh, so you're not looking at the whole alignment. Uh, one of the another option is to actually use a point control just on the areas that you need it, limiting it by the station range. So just remember a horizontal feature constraint is processed for the whole range of each the template drop that it's in. Uh, display rules on end conditions. So a display rule on an end condition, we do not recommend it. And the reason we don't recommend it is, say you have uh, 10 different end conditions and they're all controlled by display rules. So uh, instead of letting the end condition itself with priorities control them. In other words, they're starting from different points. Uh, they're, you know, they're not part of the same tree. So you use display rules for the end conditions. Even though the display rule turns them off, doesn't mean that they are not processed. In conditions are all every in condition is always processed for every template drop. So if you have a template drop that has 10 in conditions on it and uh, you're using the display rules to turn them on and off, you're still processing those 10 uh, in conditions for every template drop as long as they're not part of the same tree. What I mean by that is if all 10 of those start from the same point, that's one tree. So you really wouldn't need in conditions at that point. So just remember that in conditions will always try to solve even though they're not displayed. And then I'm, uh, you know, poking a little fun at some of the templates I've seen. We call them Franken templates, um, which are cool and will do a lot. Uh, but just remember every time you put a template in that has, you know, a hundred different conditions in it, it's got to process those hundred different conditions um, for every template drop. It's got to look for those. Uh, so, and two, I uh, didn't write it down, but uh, one of the things about Franken templates is if you give that template to someone else, uh, they're most likely will not be able to use it correctly. It's just because unless you document it very, very thoroughly, so just remember, uh, Franken templates sometimes um, are good for you, but may not be for somebody else. And it, again, the processing speed of Franken templates there. So uh, corridor template drops. And I've seen here, especially here lately for some reason, is people may have, you know, a couple of mile uh, uh, interval and in they were dropping their templates every one foot, which is fine. I mean, we can process that, but just remember over a mile, you've got uh, 5,280 template drops. When some areas don't need that density, um, especially if you're on flat or continuous slope areas, 
things like that. And also, too, if you're using it with uh, horizontal and vertical curve densification, you may not need that interval uh, through the curves because your densification is taking care of that. So here's an example of one. I've got an intersection where I may want to have denser templates. So I just created a template drop. Um, the one on the left, the middle one, and the one on the right, all three of them are the same template. And all I've got on the in the intersection is I've got them dropping at one foot interval. And I've also got my civil cell or the intersection clipping out that particular area of my corridor. So when I process the corridor, the whole corridor is very fast because in this area where I've got the intersection, it's only processing at one foot in that area. area. And two, remember the multiplier. If I bump it up to two, it will be processing every two foot, so it makes it even faster. So um, just remember, if you don't need uh, dense templates everywhere, create template drops in your areas where you do need the templates and set the interval uh, lower on that one template drop. And if I go over here to my corridor and zoom down to this area right here, you can see that. So if I look at the template drop for this one area, look at the properties of it, I have it set to one foot, where the one on the other side, so on either side of it, my um, template uh, interval is 10 feet. So uh, you can see there that uh, in this area, I may have wanted it, and outside of it, I didn't. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you, and see you next time.